Hello and welcome to Greater Somerville for June 7th, 2016. I'm Joe Lynch. On this episode, it is my pleasure to welcome for his first and not his last visit to Greater Somerville, the new Executive Director of Somerville Community Access Television, Brian Zip. Brian comes to Massachusetts by way of Texas and Michigan, and now he and his family make their home in the West Roxbury neighborhood of Boston. He has spent the last 10 years or so working in community access media centers and joined the best of all community centers, that would be us, in April of this year. It is my pleasure to grill, skewer, and otherwise interrogate the new executive director of SCAT TV, Somerville Community Access Television, Brian Zip. Now, there's your <laughs> line. Your line is... I appreciate the opportunity to be roasted so early <laughs> on in my, my tenure here as executive director. We gave you a month, Brian. Yeah, and I appreciate that, yeah. I told you when you came in, you know, give it a month. If you want to pack your bags and run screaming through Union Square and say, what have I got myself into? But it's a pleasure that you're appearing here on Greater Somerville. And thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you for having me. So is the shell shock worn off yet? That you've got yourself into a uh, situation? It's, it's awesome controlled chaos yeah. and uh, a, a great environment yeah. and um, just the energy here in Somerville has been fantastic. Um, Kalamazoo where I was most recently from um, has a very vibrant access center and uh, is a very vibrant community but uh, um, this uh, Reminder back on one of the coasts as far as the the pace of life and everything else has yeah just been uh, <clears throat> Kicking it up a notch or two to to eleven if you're For, into the spinal tap references, you know, we do <laughs> the spinal tap <laughs> references. I am older than you Brian, but I do get it. All uh, right So so what takes somebody from Texas to Michigan and then to New England? Um, ultimately, Texas was just born and raised um, in El Paso so uh, Desert Southwest on the, the Mexican border. Uh, ultimately went to college in uh, Maine, as far away from home as I could get without leaving the country. So actually kind of on the Canadian border. Um, What's you know, your alumni up in Maine? Uh, Bowdoin College. Bowdoin? Yeah. So got the way whole up. New England thing. And uh, yeah, again, fell in love with uh, four seasons, snow, water in the form of rain and snow, and just you know coastline and rivers and everything. Um, and as far as, and yeah, so prior to moving down to Michigan, I was here in the Boston area for about uh, 10 years. And then uh, we made a move, a family decision move to move to uh, Michigan, four generations of family. Um, my wife's grandmother was getting up there in years and had some physical needs and, and needed some uh, additional caretaking kind of thing. So we kind of made that decision. and. Um, at the time, my, my son was uh, just a toddler, and his uh, two, two of his cousins were in the Michigan area, and so it was an, a nice opportunity for him to, to uh, hang out with uh, uh, family his own age, that kind of thing. That was something that was important to my wife when she was growing up. Uh, she's originally from the Orlando area, um, but had that same sort of uh, strong family feel, uh, again, she, part Greek. So yeah, again, <coughs> uh, Family ties are a very, very strong and important thing. But for your son, you know, that, that move, him being a toddler, that was a little bit easier rather than trying to yank him out of elementary or high school. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually the return here has been perfectly timed because um, he's uh, finishing up eighth grade middle school here and uh, now going into high school, you know, and I know that's typically the roughest time as far as that's yanking the, someone out of... That's <laughs> when the fun begins for dad, Brian. <laughs> so Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo, Michigan is about a world away as you can get from Somerville, Massachusetts, but you spent a, an extraordinary amount of time there. I, I actually read some of the comments when you left Kalamazoo that people would miss you. And then when you landed the job here, I read some other things on um, I think it was LinkedIn, probably. Mm -hmm. well, no, I'm sorry. It was the post that SCAT TV sent out. It oh, was yeah, the, the, press the press release. release uh -huh. And the, some people from Kalamazoo responded to it and said, oh, Brian, we wish you were back here. So <laughs> that gave us a good feeling that we got a good person in here. Tell us a little bit about the background, though, Brian. What got you into community access television? Um, 
ultimately, my my uh, I'm, I'm a recovering English major from from uh, college, and uh, was uh, working for a publisher in Boston, one of many many publishers. And I like to say that my my sort of move into community media was sort of the evolution of media in general. Mm -hmm. So going from a print publishing background, uh, uh, there was an opening for for a public relations person at the, the Access Center in, in Kalamazoo. And at the time I, I was hired, the uh, job description was very much of a, um, you know, a media-centric uh, PR kind of position. Mm -hmm. um, however, the director there at the time, uh, I was there for about two weeks and the director left. Um, and uh, but we had a whole transition. No, no, it, but it was sort of a, um, yeah, kind of an unstable period for a little bit yeah. there. Uh, however, at the um, the the good news for Kalamazoo was uh, we got uh, uh, Harry Hosh or Hap Hosh, uh, who uh, was very much a mentor to me. Um, been in the community media industry for years. Uh, testified before Congress on several occasions, specifically regarding. Uh, uh, the community access uh, take on lots of pending telecom legislation and mm -hmm. so forth mm -hmm. um, and really kind of brought a much broader picture of what community media is as opposed to here's this little agency in, right. in a Midwest town that just kind of does this thing. Um, he really brought kind of a much bigger, you know, the a much bigger picture of what community media is and what it means. Um, and. Uh, that was sort of my real kind of indoctrination, if you want to call it that, into into the sort of this this much uh, bigger world of of uh, you know media produced by people in the community and uh, you know the empowerment that comes with that, the free speech that 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 ensures, um, and have been a, a huge fan ever since, and part of that uh, mix. Uh, with bringing HAP on board meant that my position expanded well beyond just doing PR stuff to the point More where than the marketing, yeah, advertising, and so outreach. this w became yep. a thing where I became a producer of both uh, radio and television shows. So actually, that was one of the things I did with my son. We used to have the Nate and his dad radio show. Um, I actually, got uh, comments from people in Australia who who listened to oh, it, that kind cool. of thing. So yeah. um, again, neat neat anecdotal stuff to see. The impact it has, and um, the thing that was most rewarding is sometimes how surprising you know where the impact may have happened. That kind of thing is so not just in the area. So we're going to look for a repeat of Nathan's dad here. And I've Austin I've been, been right talking up. to him about that. Um, he, he's very in intrigued. Uh, he's he's a 14 year old teenager now, and so right now the comic book sort of uh, geeky nerdy thing is his his big thing and Get it's like here, Brian. that's he a great own show. well he, and that's a great subject matter for doing yeah. a show where you he can talk about need stuff anymore he can no, do yeah, his I own think that'll show. be the thing we'll be. make it easy <laughs> for him so leaving Kalamazoo I, you know my understanding is you left the Air Force that was a job relocation yeah um, yeah. my wife uh, ultimately got a fantastic job offer that we could not refuse right. um, and so uh, we actually rushed her back to uh, the Boston area rented a, an apartment sight unseen via the internet and uh, all sorts of amazing things that, uh, um, yeah, if you had planned it, we would have never done it, you know, but it just sort of right. uh, roll with the flow. It's called the confluence of the stars. Yeah. 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 So um, we're happy to have you here, Brian. I mean, it's been a couple of months now. Yeah. I've watched your controlled chaos <laughs> and, and I've watched your demeanor over the past few months. And I got to tell you, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I, you've watched me in action. I've watched you. You're calm. <laughs> you're level. You're steady. So when's the blow up going to come? Um, it 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 shouldn't. All right. Um, and, and a lot of this though is. I, I wanted to film it. Oh, so. Sure, sure. Yeah. But a lot of this though is is ultimately what the production environment is right. like too. Right. That uh, the show must always go on. Yep. Um, the sign of a good director or producer is when everything is imploding and sinking around you you still have to keep your head about you so you can make it work. Right. And, and right. that's, uh, um, again, being in a community media environment where uh, oftentimes equipment is used by lots of different people and not necessarily in the most pristine we know of condition. About that down here, don't um, we, Brian? <laughs> you know, you, know you, 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 learn to, um, you learn to roll with uh, a lot of punches. Right. And, and so 
But the evolution of community access, you, you know, uh, there's those of us who have been doing this for a while. I'm not a veteran like you are, but, you know, going on nine years of, of doing one type of a show or another. Mm -hmm. The evolution of community access television has taken us from the days of, you know, shows that kind of look like they were produced in the barn or in the basement <laughs> or in the garage to very high quality, high tech, um, television ready or movie ready um, uh, productions. So, you know, we're here at SCAT TV, we've made some changes over the last several years in terms of our equipment and our broadcasting capabilities. We've added Boston Free Radio mm -hmm. as one of the components of the family. We have Somerville Neighborhood News. And you, as our new executive director, have to lead the charge for us for the next 10 years or 15 years. Talk a little bit, Brian, if you can, about the technology that we have to utilize to the best of our abilities here that's going to keep people watching community access television, not only on their television through cable, but on our other distribution channels such as YouTube and you know our own website and our live streaming. Talk a little bit about what sure. you've seen over the years. Um, well, ultimately, what all of this is is, is boils down ultimately back to storytelling and people being able to to share and tell their stories. Um, technology is something that's it's a double-edged sword in that uh, well again you can see uh, a lot of big budget movies where they've thrown hundreds of millions of dollars at something but forgot to uh, hire a writing staff <laughs> and and no no amount of uh, smoke and mirrors is going to keep an audience engaged and for, for two and a half hours. Flops. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, but again that, that goes back to the where the technology can't ultimately um, it should be a complement and, and should help you tell your story, but it shouldn't dominate to the point where the, you know the story takes a back seat. Um, what you were touching on too though in terms of the distribution outlets, I think that's really where technology has affected uh, kind of the, the whole media landscape for, for uh, community media, uh, for media in general, in terms of uh, my wife, her background is in, in um, newspapers, you know, legacy, mm -hmm. legacy uh, you know, uh, newsprint uh, kind of thing. And uh, just to see the evolution for, for them, in addition to radio and television news, how now it's all multimedia. So the, the local radio station usually has video on their website of, of events. Uh, obviously, for a legacy print publication, um, you know they send everyone out now with with a camera um, mm -hmm. because the expectation is that you're going to get right. some nice sound bites, some uh, some uh, video clips as well. Even if your primary bent is is still um, long form writing, that the 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 evolution is there though. That you have to kind of appeal to all the senses with the multimedia, um, and that's kind of the thing too with uh, a place like. Uh, this, you know, we're, we're called SCAT TV currently, um, and the the AT for access television uh, still harkens back to a time when that was sort of our that was the only, only thing, yeah, right. where we that was uh, um, sort of a one saloon town kind of thing, and part of the evolution of most access media centers is um, obviously the access television is still a an integral part of of the media landscape, but that's um, it's important to continue looking to the full media landscape as a community media center. Uh, where I came from in, in Kalamazoo, we had a low power FM radio station. Here we have uh, BFR. Um, you know, here uh, SCAT TV streams all of uh, all of the television programming. So again, uh, the the internet is is. Uh, um, a readily available way for and people to watch it. shows are also streamed on the internet. Exactly. So all of you who have ever said to me, oh geez Joe, I don't have <laughs> Comcast or RCN, <clears throat> you can get it on your lap or on your computer at home. Exactly. And, and that's, that's part of the thing is uh, trying to reach the biggest audience possible. Right. So it's not just someone who's a cable subscriber who's in the immediate um, subscriber footprint of our cable carriers. Now potentially you know, the entire world uh, is is your audience. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, to encapsulate that whole thing when, you know, uh, SCAT TV started in 1984, 82, 84, 
it was only folks who had a cable provider were able to see any of the television shows that we put on down here. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a radio station, we didn't have an internet capability. And it was funny you brought up the print part of it. When I first started the show, because we didn't have the capabilities we have today, when I started the show in 2000, whatever, um, I utilized the print media because they were much more ahead than we were in terms mm. of internet access to news. So, you know, the Boston Globe, all three locals here in Somerville, um, Tufts Daily, you know, anybody who was interested, I would send them the file the next day after recording the live show. So that was my distribution channel. Then we created our own blog. And obviously, you know, the more eyes that are on your show, the better off it is. That, that's Absolutely. for good or bad. People are going to let you know. You know, I get stopped oftentimes in Market Basket or on the street or, you know, somebody just saying, I saw the show the other night. And I always ask them where they've seen the show. Did you see it live? Did you see it, you know, recorded a repeat on SCAT TV? Did you watch it on the Internet? Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, that has shifted over the years, is that a lot of people don't tune in for the live show at 7.30. They watch it. They watch it later. They could TiVo it. They could record it on their devices at home. But they watch it at their convenience now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's going to pose an interesting um, strategy for the station, for the media center. How do we keep up with being important enough for people to want to watch us constantly? You know, NBC Nightly News, people turn, tune in at night to mm -hmm. watch that. They may only watch it for 15 minutes to see what the first 15 minutes are all about. And then if there's a story that really they want to go more in depth, they'll use the internet for that. Right, right. So it's going to be interesting. I, 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 I love talking about this stuff with you <laughs> because you're, you're a veteran of this stuff. But what does that mean for SCAT TV? How do we position ourselves to remain relevant moving ahead? Um, well, I, I've learned early on there is no magic bullet solution. And um, actually, any a lot of the failures I've seen of access centers that have ultimately had to close and stuff is because they were relying on on one single thing uh, a little too much for too long and then when that sort of disappeared you know the entire substance of the organization was was gone all the eggs in one basket right yeah. um, you know and part of the the beauty of community media is we really are um, a community of a bunch of niches and and so it's important to um, kind of maintain the uh, the communication uh, and pipeline as far as working with all these niches. Uh, you know, in, in Somerville, it's amazing how many um, different cultures we have in this is what a four and a half square mile area. Sure. Um, you know, so it's a veritable High United Nations and yeah, which is up there with the kids. Um, you know, so we need to uh, be constantly making appeals to. Uh, uh, potential uh, users of this place uh, and, and viewers, i.e. Uh, uh, end consumers, uh, so to speak, as far as uh, you know, offering uh, uh, the appeal of, of multi-language uh, programming, uh, hyper-local news. Again, you know, part of that's what we're currently addressing with uh, SNN. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that's going to play uh, a bigger role, especially as um, sort of the implosion of traditional media continues where uh, you have you know, the six giant uh, international conglomerates controlling 90% of, of, of the media. Mm -hmm. That uh, you know, if you want to really know what's happening um, beyond, um, well again, we, here we can see the, the Prudential building, but most of, uh, most of the news for, for uh, greater Boston is really Boston centric. Boston, Boston centric, or you know, financial district, Boston centric, right. you know, that kind of thing. Right. As far Either as Boston centric, or accidents, or violence, or the, not if really, it leads, it leads kind no of thing, really, right? And with the exception of, with the exception of, you know, f certain folks on NPR or WGBH, there really is no in-depth reporting. I mean, it used to be uh, uh, to my friends over at WCVB, but. Chronicle used to do some really good in-depth investigative reporting, 
now it's all travel shows. You know, mm -hmm. let's back roads and I mean, I hate to say that, but you know, locally here too, Brian, I agree with you and you and I have talked about it, um, you know, off offline is that SCAT TV can play a very, very vital role going forward in being the news source for Somervillians because SNN has now proved its chops. You know, more people are watching that than ever before because of, let me give credit to, you know, one of its founders, Jane Regan, and our current SNN director, Heather Avison. When they want to go for an in-depth news report about what's happening with the Green Line, they go to SNN now. So, you know, to all deference to my friends in the print media here in the city, we got some bad news that, you know, Somerville Journal had closed up its office here. Um, you know, the reporters are basically hanging in the wind trying to find a restaurant that will accommodate them, um, and the editor left. That does not bode well for Somerville's oldest and longest continuing serving print media. The other two organizations that are still left in town, you know, I don't see a whole lot of investigative reporting going mm -hmm. on in that. So that creates the niche. Mm -hmm. It creates a, a need for the public, and the public is going to respond, I think, to SNN sure, sure. moving forward. Talk a little bit, you know, going forward in terms of our role, SCAT TV's role here in the, in the community. Our role is to serve the community. Absolutely. And more and more I see where the educational programs that we're offering are becoming more, those classes are filling up more and more. We have a new hire, Heather McCormick. Talk a little bit about her youth outreach part of it that she's doing. Um, yeah, the part of... Um Part of staying relevant is is maintaining that pipeline, and so um, obviously one of those things was definitely developing uh, younger people into becoming the uh, savvy media consumers, savvy media producers, and and um, we're hoping that um, SCAT TV is part of that that landscape in terms of uh, that media production and so forth. Um, Heather has been doing a fantastic job. Actually, she and I started the same day. Um, I just had to. To show up to my office and you know be handed lots of ledgers and books and so forth, whereas Heather had uh, a bunch of young people sitting on the doorstep waiting. at nine o'clock waiting to uh, begin the uh, 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 spring break youth camp, yeah. and um, actually it was a fantastic uh, sort of trial by fire just as far as um, me getting to observe the staff here because uh, everyone chipped in and uh, made, made the, uh, the camp a really su su successful event for the week, especially considering, you know, prior to that 9 o'clock, it's, you know, do we have cameras that these young people can use, that kind of thing. So just a, a neat opportunity to see everyone sort of uh, step up to the occasion and make it work. But, uh, yeah, this summer we have a bunch of uh, youth programming um, activities scheduled, and uh, I know uh, we have an animation workshop that we've already... I think filled up at this point, and uh, several additional youth media workshops that uh, are are starting to fill up fast. So I'm making the plug now to if you have a have a young person and uh, they are looking for something to do, uh, making media is a fantastic thing. Either just making it yourself, or it's a great complement to whatever else you like to do. If you want to skateboard, uh, being able to share your love of skateboarding via capturing it on 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 camera and, and for the, on TV for is fantastic. And for those of you who do not watch us on television and watch us on the internet, Brian's number is 617-628-8826 <laughs> or director at scattvsomerville.org. Org. There you go. I never email these folks. I always call. All right. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that when uh, the prior, we should give kudos to the interim executive director, Rob Zargas, who Absolutely. Is here. Absolutely. Um, you know, the trial by fire, I, I don't think he will ever forget it. Um, and then he was p integral in part of the hiring process. And they had, you know, done a search committee. Um, but one of the things I wanted to say about it was that uh, one of the first things I said to him was, could we please get a phone system down here that is 21st century technology? And now we have caller ID on some of the phones where they can see and that's been the bane of my existence <laughs> because when the staff down here says, oh, God, it's lunch calling again. So, But it's a terrific staff. You inherited some people. You have some new people who, who came in. Um, you know, I, I just want to say that it, it is a trial by fire for you 
Um, you came in, there was very little, um, very little training time. That, that learning curve went almost vertical for you, <laughs> but you know, we're very happy to have you, have you here. And one of the things that I've, I've tried to do is to make it um, as easy as possible for you to get to know people on the outside of SCAT TV. You have an enormous job ahead of you. You're here, I know, early, and you leave late. Yeah. Um, but here's the part of it. You know, don't be afraid. With in, the Somerville community is so welcoming; they really are. Don't be afraid just to walk. If there's somebody that you want to meet, just give them a buzz. They'll be happy to come down here, or you go. Out, you know, get out of here every now and then, <laughs> Brian. I mean, go out there and meet some folks. I know that we took a trip over to Cambridge. Right, Cambridge, right. Television, Susan Fleischman and her crew over there. You were totally envious of their studio. I could Impressive tell. Impressive stuff. Yeah. But. Um, you know, be, uh, here's my, here would be my advice after working with so many different folks down here at SCAD TV. Just be as open as possible with them that you're here for this studio and for this community. And that's the key to it. You know, people oh, yeah. call me all the time. Can we get on your show? Can we do this? Can we? I say, sure. That's what Access Television is all about. Yeah, yeah. So leading us forward, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. You didn't think you were going to not <laughs> get away with being skewered. In the future, we do have, and I think many of the folks at home, we probably only got about a minute left, but in the future, many of the folks know what's happening down here in Union Square. Mm -hmm. Massive redevelopment. The Green Line coming. Yes, it is coming, folks. We've done segments on it. Go to the Somerville Community Access Television website and look at all of our specials on the Green Line. It's coming. The city owns this building. We may not be a tenant right. here after the fact. What would you like to see? And I want you to speak directly to the mayor <laughs> in, <laughs> and tell him what kind of studio you envision for our 21st century future. Um, ultimately, um, in many cases, the stuff that we already have here has been fantastic as far as Union Square being such a, a nexus point for, for people to be able to to get to. So location? Um, location, location, location is huge. Space? Um, space. Um, what would you do with <clears throat> another big studio? Uh, <laughs> believe me, we, we, we could do a, a lot of a lot of amazing stuff. I, I would love to have room just for uh, props, potentially. Prop um, you know, in, in terms of being able to give people the opportunity to really leave an individual mark on, on their show.